it is what it is. Well, but I'm gonna make gonna, it work. You, you know. say you want to chime in on that because you know I'm gonna put throw mine in. Well, I just hope that one day I'll have the <laughs> desire to get married. Okay, idea. go ahead. You say what's your take? <laughs> well, I agree with everything that they've been saying about um, about marriage. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I don't know about the God part in the sense that of um, knowing what um, God wants or even being in fear of God. But I think that a um, person needs to have, they need to come from a place of self-development first. Uh -oh, uh -oh. If you're not, if you, if you're going to get married, pe to me, people get married for a lot of the wrong reasons. They get married because they're lonely. They get married because they want some companionship. They need some help paying their bills and stuff. So they get married, right? That's for the right reason. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, you just want to help me. See, and, and go ahead, Ty. But I mean, some, I mean, some of that, some, some of that could be part of the mix. But you gotta, but but um, you have to become, you know, um, one within yourself mm -hmm. in the sense of just like what you're talking about, God. I would call that becoming one with God. You gotta mm -hmm. feel yourself and be satisfied within yourself, so that you bring something to the relationship. You know, and so once you and, and so how would you describe it? You describe it as God. You describe it as the universe. You describe it as being part of. You know, just becoming one with yourself. Because we do have God to create us, we are we are creatures of the Creator, and so we are reflections of that. You know, so I have no problem with the whole idea of God, but it's like, um, what do we um, we have to know within ourselves? It can't just come from a book, <coughs> the, the you know the books that's been written has to come from within. You have to feel those words and those teachings within yourself, and then you can bring something to the table. You know what? This you know what? This is what we're gonna fight on live TV. No, right. I said TV. Hello. Hello. <laughs> but, but no, it's, it's just a play when I said argue. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh -huh. I hear you. Uh, the the only issue is that is that we're uh, we're um, imperfect people. We come into the table with two people with two different ideologies, two different backgrounds, mm -hmm. two different thought mentalities, and somewhere down the line, we gotta find that to work. And even in the working process, we still I'm not going to get it right. I'm over 19 years, and there's some things I'm still trying to figure out with my wife. We dated for six years, so I'm still learning, even myself within her. So, so being, I don't like the word perfect, but being on that page, we would never get there because we're everyday changes. Mm -hmm. And you realize, and, and the most, uh, I'm going to use my grandfather for an example. I've been married to my grandmother for over 50 years. He lost her a month ago. Mm -hmm. His whole world changed. Mm -hmm. See, and we don't take, and even in the 50 some odd years, ups and downs, mm -hmm. mistakes, arguments, all this stuff. So we would never get that full satisfaction the way we think it should be. That's where the, uh, that's where the submitting one to another. It's beyond compromise. I have to understand and realize my wife ain't gonna agree with me all the time, and I don't, I'm not, and I'm not gonna agree with her. But yet, we still got to have a desire to make it, and in that desire, and I'm just saying, we start to feel that fullness, that wholeness of not just each other, but the one, because it's no longer two people, it's mm -hmm. just one. So that's what. That's my one and a half cent. You know, <laughs> I mean, you're just going all the yeah, way in. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna get the I mean, usher to get me not, out the it's, door. It's okay. It's okay. No, you know, no, but, go but, ahead. Go but ahead. I'm, I'm in agreement with you, and in, in, you know, in, in all the fundamental ways, you know, and um, just like we have this whole idea of love as being this romantic thing, right? And we get that, and we get that from who? We don't get that from ourselves, That's from our right. culture. That does, that comes from a whole nother culture. Mm -hmm. So the ancient African symbol for Love is a man with a hole plowing the ground, right? He's fixing a hole, a hole like an H O E, an instrument, a farm gardening instrument. You know, happy old Easter. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. So you're talking about um, labor, like like you use the term a labor of love. It's not going to be perfect, but it's something that you that, that you have to work at. You have to cultivate it mm -hmm. to make it grow. And unless you're willing to do that. And I'm in agreement with it because if, if for you to engage in that whole process of being married and loving somebody, 
it's a it's a labor and you have to have something above and beyond yourself mm -hmm. that motivates you to want to do that yes. you know so um you can come from a scriptural perspective or you say but well, this book is my guiding principle or you can find some other because depending upon where you was born you, the book is going to be different you know if i was born in mm -hmm. saudi arabia i'm reading a different book if i was born in india i got the Bhagavad Gita and all these other books that saying something different, but the underlying message is usually pretty much the same. If you don't work at this stuff, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. If you don't give, that's yeah, my, you got to be so giving. When I when I've experienced, if you're exactly what you do, I'm saying, if you're constantly giving, then if both of us in America are giving, and looking out for one another, putting that spirituality, whatever you believe in, also within it, and you're giving and giving. You'll never feel left out. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that you're not going to feel, you know, lonely yeah. sometimes, but it's actually he's saying you're cultivating. That's anything you, you feed into. Mm -hmm. It's going to give back to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're talking about love today. Right. We sure enough finding it out on Fridays. Anyway, we got to move from this, it's right? This is great. Other. It is at the end yeah. of the day. And the other thing, well, so I'm not married, so. This is what I need to know now. I wonder why. No one, excuse me, excuse mm. me. Uh, <laughs> amen. The I'm credit not, is so either. good. All right, I'm going to get you back here, <laughs> sir. I ain't you know, married either, okay. sir. All right, see what? <laughs> hey, I love it. All right, well, hold on, hold on. Let me, so let me say this. Okay. So, Cortez, Laverne, yes. you all are not controlling you all's relationship, your marriages. I try not to. You try not to. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Cortez. You're not controlling your marriage. Mm. No. So, so you, so you all have you, you both have a balanced say, relationship with your you, spouses. If you're speaking about control, mm -hmm. you can never feel you're controlling if you're open. And you're so open communication, to communication, is, mm -hmm, right? And you're mm -hmm. always open to listening and to the other person's perspectives, their ideas. That's never controlling, okay. and that's how I think it should be. What about you? I'm scared. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> you got all Smart me. Smart me. But, well, but, say, Smart me. but um, I, I've, I've, I've learned to kind of sort of do the opposite of communication, okay. which is listen. Listen. We're so adamant about the I'm communication. I'm sorry, but that's a form of communication. Yeah, but that's, that's the first step. Yes. Listen, okay. we, we can argue. Up. No, I'm just playing. Okay. <laughs> but, but no, but see, that, uh, in, in marriage fellowships and things like that, one of the first things we say is, Communication, 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 and I agree with that three thousand percent. But there be so much communication that we forget to listen and mm -hmm. hear, mm -hmm. and not just the voice, but the hearts of our spouse, the spirit of our spouse. Because there are days when they're suppressed with many other things, mm -hmm. and they can say something. And as a spouse, we we may have it may be in our position to listen and hear. Mm -hmm. And not just say, okay, well, it's my turn. I'm tired of you talking about what's going on with your day. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's how we start the lack of communication, the arguments and the resentments, because now we figure it's my turn, your turn. But I've learned that it's sitting around a lot of wise cats and growing up in church and uncles and things like that, man, the best thing you can do in your marriage is do your part. Let's do your and part. You, okay. You can't, you can't, you're responsible in a sense for your other spouse or based off how you are. But if you're married, there's a part that you play, and 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 and, and you're being watched not only by God but your children and all these other people yes. who uh, you have to be an example for. But I still be scared though. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna get off into something else. This is great. Um, love is beautiful. Okay, yeah. it's great, and we have a lot going on. Um, you laughing? You know, no. I think I'm just I'm telling afraid. the truth, you know, and we got to talk about what we have happening now, you know, and I'm talking about, we're going to start off on this one because we may talk a little longer, but okay. I want to talk about how you, you, how you all feel about all this that's coming out about Michael Jackson, the uh, priest, about R. Kelly, about the sexual abuse that has mm -hmm. happened with children. I'm going to start with uh, you, Laverne, and then. Okay. Okay. Well, as things are coming out, honestly, my first reaction, I feel for the victims mm -hmm. and the accusers. Mm -hmm. Me as a, a person that loves people and a, a, I am a spiritual person, mm -hmm. 
that's my first reaction. I hear what everyone is saying about what happened to these people, but my heart is also crying out for the person who is the perpetrator, supposedly, mm -hmm. who's being accused. And I pray for them. And I pray for the other side of those people. Um, and I also, to be honest, me and my family talk about it, me and my husband. I don't believe everything I hear. Okay. Okay? okay. I have to take things in, in the perspective of take everything as a whole. You can't believe everything you hear mm -hmm. and, and just run with it and, and put all these comments on social media. You have to keep a, you know, have to keep yourself in check. You don't know, so don't continue to spread that that you don't know. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't. Mm -hmm. You got to keep your your character in check. Okay. Because there's a lot of people that can say things about us. That doesn't necessarily mean it's true. That's, that is true. Okay? That is true. So that's my perspective. I, okay. I, I feel for both sides. I, okay. I'm sorry if, you know, that these things, if they did happen to these people, it's really sad. Okay. But I'm familiar with traumatic, you know, abuses and, and it's real. Okay. But it's happening in our community every day. I was you know. say that. All right, Cortez. Um, I think I mean we kicked off the radio show and all this stuff. No, just, just don't. The reason being because I think it's a big distraction. Okay. All this is. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I agree with what my sister said. However, I just think it's bigger fish to fry, you know, that's real than this. And and I'm gonna probably leave it out on this note is the fact that we are the number one people, and I'm talking about the black community. We'll be the first to say I don't judge nobody. Mm -hmm. But yet, until it gets something like this, all our compassion, empathy, sympathy, forgiveness does not exist. But if it was, but if R. Kelly, Michael Jackson was somebody, a personal friend of ours, mm -hmm. a family member, we'll be protecting them today. One, we oh Lord, pray. For, we'll throw their names on the mm -hmm. altar. We'll we'll send out Facebook things saying pray for my blah blah blah. We'll do all that. Mm -hmm. But based off these situations and the way the spirit of this stuff is existing, all our compassion. And all this spirit of forgiveness does not exist. And this is the thing, this this is why I say it's just a distraction. While they're doing all this, look at our community just constantly getting schools being closed, all these different things, and we're being drawn to this media thing. Mm -hmm. and yet our economic situations are falling. You know, I'm gonna pass the mic. Okay. <laughs> well, um the the thing for me is that as far as children being involved and now they're, you know, older and coming out and saying that these things happen to them, you know. So I'm 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 gonna stop right there and I'm gonna let Yasir uh go on go on ahead in now. Go on ahead, do what you do. Well I think that um, you know, these things they can be a distraction. I think that oftentimes they are designed to be a distraction, but you have to take each case you know, separately. So, mm -hmm. you, so you mentioned the church, mm -hmm. like the, the Catholic, church, yes. Catholic, Catholic church, church which the I am, man. which I am very um, aware of as somebody who went to Catholic school for nine years of grade school, four years of high school, and who has taught at the largest Catholic university in the United States mm -hmm. for about 20, almost twenty years. Mm -hmm. um, I think the cap. I think. Michael Jackson's a different issue. It's a different issue. Okay. So that thing right there is a distraction. Yes. That's a distraction. Mm -hmm. R. Kelly is real because you can still see videos, you know, of him doing stuff, yes. you know. So, you know, in a sense, if you focus all your intention onto that mm -hmm. and think it's above and beyond what it really is, mm -hmm. then that can be a distraction too. Mm -hmm. But the Catholic Church, to me, is an organized pedophile um, organization. organization. Yeah, that's okay. the, the the purpose of <laughs> it's a it, it's a fundamental feature mm -hmm. of the Catholic Church, not the religion or not the spirituality, mm -hmm. but the church as an institution. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, in from what opinion. I have observed mm -hmm. and from what I can see, studying historically and looking at documentation from the current day that there is a issue of pedophilia mm -hmm. which is built into the catholic church because of the way that they protect it the way that they promote it built under the ground into. it's built it's a built-in feature wow. and so and so um that's something that we need to deal with the other thing when it comes to pedophilia mm -hmm. and uh, incest mm -hmm. in our black african-american culture mm -hmm. 
that's a problem that exists there. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, because um, even I've raised four children. Yes. And I've sent them to African dance class, this class, and I know that there was attempts mm -hmm. by some of their teachers, wow. or at least one who I know for sure, and if you listen and you know who you are, Ooh. I ain't gonna say your name, Ooh. but I know there was attempts by at least one person mm -hmm. to try to, um, you know, oh. assault yeah. one of my, um, was really my nephew, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, so these predators, they do exist. Mm -hmm. They exist in families. I know very few women who have not been sexually assaulted, mm -hmm. you know, um, by a family member or somebody close to the family. When I was growing up, I'm a male. I'm a, you know, I was a little. I'm a male. I'm a little kid. But when I was growing up, a man tried to molest me. Wow. I was just able to punch him in the right place and run away because <laughs> I was like a little kid. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I wasn't supposed to be feeling this. Ding dong on yeah. my arm, yeah. so I had to punch it and run. Okay, okay. You know, right. and, punch but, it and run. But the I thing, but the run. thing about it, I was so I felt like I had did something wrong. Okay. So I never told anybody. If I had told my grandfather, that man would have been shot in the head you see? And, and laid out in the alley. Let me. Okay. So why did you feel not to tell? <clears throat> I felt ashamed. I felt like it was my fault. I felt, um, I mean, and this is what the victim feels, mm -hmm. you know. Let's talk about it. It's a natural, you know, like, I, I, I was a child, um, I worked in the child welfare, um, not industry, but the child welfare um, field mm -hmm. as, a, as a case manager and as an administrator for DCFS in, in Illinois. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is something I, I know intimately. Mm -hmm. But the victim always feels ashamed. Okay. So whether they're the victim of um, a, a child, a predator that preys upon them as a child, or if, even if they even if they've been raped by somebody, mm -hmm. they feel ashamed. They feel like it's, it was I, I'm, I'm either fully or partly responsible for what happened to mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. and it's a psychology okay. that the predator knows that gives them a license to feel like I can probably get away with this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand psychology. So oftentimes people feel it was their own fault why they was assaulted and they feel ashamed or, or they or, 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 or they feel like nobody's going to believe me okay. or they feel as though uh, if I tell people it's going to cause a big thing and I'm going to be accused of being a hoe if I'm a woman right. and I'm going to wow. be accused well, why was you there at why would you there at 10 o'clock 10 12 o'clock two o'clock in the morning with this person mm -hmm. but you know when you tell a man no that doesn't mean anything. You don't, you let them get all hot and bothered, but now mm -hmm. you tell them no. Right. You know. Like so yeah, yeah, like that's not allowed to say no. I changed my mind. Yeah, I changed my you mind. Know? Yeah, whatever. You know? even, even if you even didn't, if I yeah. wasn't thinking about right. it, doing yeah. it. You yeah. know, you're not even. You know, don't yeah. get me started. I, I, I was just before I, I really want to chime in what the brother was saying. I, I just think it's important for me to say, mm -hmm. even as children and adults, mm -hmm. women. I would say more women, mm -hmm. not men, mm -hmm. but. The predator usually has a way of gradually getting there, as you said, it's the psychology around it. They don't just mm -hmm. abruptly come out. And this is just for people listening, this could be a coworker, a longtime friend. They're gonna do little things to work themselves toward that. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have an inappropriate touch. They're gonna say something first. And if they think they can get away with that, they move to step two. So I'm gonna just say for those that are listening, you have to you have to Nip that in the bud. Right away. Right, right in the away. Beginning. Yeah. Even if it's a coworker or whomever, when they say, say, excuse me, I don't play that way, they know already they're going to go find someone else to pedophile, you know, to um, prey upon. Prey yeah. upon. Yeah. Violate. Yeah. That's yeah. the word I'm going to say. They're going to find someone else to violate. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, when, you know, you have to just, that's me personally, especially as a married woman, mm -hmm. I have a, you have to have a guard up and you have to not be so playful because you don't know how the next person's going to take it mm -hmm. and how do you think they can just swim in and take advantage of you. Right. So, um, my thing is, and we got to move from this, but as you get older, you know, if you had these situations happen to you, you see her, regarding the mindset like, did you have uh, walls up or how was it, you know, because we have those who are in our society that don't know how to relate or don't know, don't know how to express themselves when it comes to, you know, finding someone or 
being in love with someone or some of them return uh turn into um transgenders you know because of what happened to them well you know the um being being preyed upon sexually um you know it's a violation it's violence mm -hmm. okay. and um it can have a traumatic psychological effect upon people where they can develop a um a abnormal not a, not abnormal but a different a, a maladaptive way of relating to people on a sexual level okay. even relating even relating to themselves on mm -hmm. a sexual level mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. in terms of their own sexual identity mm -hmm. and things that they um th that they are that they think they're attracted to and they oftentimes act in certain ways which is to punish themselves you gotta look at oh, the wow. inner okay. inner psychology people okay. do, people do things they act out sexually Sometimes to get back at the predator mm -hmm. within their mind, not not that not that they're actually getting back at that person, but it's it's a subconscious act of getting back. Sometimes they um, punish themselves mm -hmm. by um, being over sexualized um, because they feel like um, you know this happened to me because I'm not worthy, I'm not a good person, mm -hmm. um, I'm not loved, I'm not deserving, and so on a subconscious level, this is how they're behaving. Mm -hmm. And so they're acting out in certain ways. So you see girls who, um, people in the, in the neighborhood, they call them hoes, right? Because mm -hmm. she's having sex, young, young girls mm -hmm. promiscuous, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, most of those girls have been molested by their father. Wow. You know, and I know this from growing up. Mm -hmm. All the girls that, you know, was um, coming at, all the older girls was coming at me when I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. Every one of them had been molested by their, by by either their fathers or by somebody close to them in their family, and a lot of that. What uh, the brother was saying about, um, you know, we got a whole bunch of issues. A lot of those fathers were were men who had been because I came up in the projects. A lot of those men were men who had been uh, who lost their jobs in the steel mill, the stockyards, and stuff, and they were feeling less than. Mm -hmm. And so wow. they didn't have job. They didn't have the capacity to really care for their family the way that they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so in some weird subconscious psychological way, right. they wound up assaulting their own children, their own daughters. Wow. You they know? were feeling very low themselves. They were feeling low themselves. Mm -hmm. And so this was this sexual assault against their own children is a, like a release. It's a psychological subconscious release. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's weird. And it's, if you don't understand psychology. Teach, teach, right. teach, right. Yes, yes. teach. Okay, so through all of what has happened and uh, what's going on within our communities, how do we go about it with meditation and healing um, from um, these assaults? Not being afraid to come out and talk about it, but I know um, we were talking about things through uh, comedic yoga, a, a form of healing. Well, um, if that's directed towards yes, me, yes, it is. Okay, the ship. <laughs> well, well, to me, yoga, and I had a, I had a, one of my, um, you know, young lady, one of my students. She just wrote a her PhD. I've had several people write their PhD mm -hmm. um, dissertations on how comedic yoga has a therapeutic effect upon um, various psychological issues, very various, and, and, and including. Um, women who are trying to overcome the negative effects of being sexually assaulted, you know, because these things, this has a lingering effect. Mm -hmm. And so yoga itself is very healing, mm -hmm. you know, so um, one of my issues with certain religious people who kind of claim that yoga is like the devil gonna get inside of you and all kind of stuff, you know? I've never heard it. Yes, but it's, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's it you is. know, I'm not saying you or nothing like that, but I'm just saying, you but just then. Point of view. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're the, the short preacher, dude, right here. You know what? You still get the But you told it, you told it, you told it, you told it in my son, though. Oh, you can't leave, you can't leave. Okay, come um, on, girl. No, okay. no, but the um <laughs> but the um 
Yeah. What was I saying? You were talking about the. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> spiritual, you know, spiritual community. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, yoga right, right, because is, because they don't understand what yoga is mm -hmm. because that's why I look, that's why I had a I understand what you meant by fear of God but I the exception I take with that is that um, you people people say oh I can't do yoga I can't meditate because if I go inside of myself and I breathe and relax and release the devil gonna get inside oh, of me wow. this is this is what Whoa. this is a strain within certain Christian beliefs, right? Mm. Or, pe or people mm. who claim to be Christians, right? Mm. Even though, see, I, I've traveled the world. Mm -hmm. I've been to, I've been to Egypt. I've been to the, I've been to the oldest monastery in Egypt, a Christian monastery. Mm -hmm. And they practice meditation and they practice yoga. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, they, they did prayer and meditation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, but the mm -hmm. first Martin Luther with the Protestant Reformation, he was the one who railed against meditation mm -hmm. and said there was something wrong with meditating. But originally within what we call Christianity, meditation was a fundamental practice within wow. that. Mm -hmm. When Jesus went into the caves and stuff, for 40 days in the dark, mm -hmm. he was meditating, Come on. Mm -hmm. you know, about it he was meditating, mm -hmm. you know, so meditation is a way of, uh, of, of getting more in tune and in touch with, with the creator, with God, whatever you want to call it, with, 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 um, spirit. Mm -hmm. And so as you do that, you're going to become healed. If you look at the Bible, right? I'm gonna start preaching. If you, if you look, <laughs> hey, hey, you take your time. Take, come on, take if your you, time. Take your time. You look, if, if you look at the Bible, it say that God took some dirt, took the earth, and He shaped and shape of a person, and He breathed the breath of life into that earth, and it became a person. We are we are who we are in the terms of being created because of the breath. The word respiratory, break it down, take out the R-E at the beginning, the O-R-Y at the end, you have spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so every time you take a breath, you are re-spiritizing yourself. Every time you take a breath, you are connecting with the creator, you are connecting with God, you're connecting with spirit. And so that's what the whole thing is about. So doing yoga, doing meditation, breathing, that is the most Christian thing that you can do. You have to start with that because you're connecting exactly with God, the creator, at the beginning of creation, at the beginning of creation of the human being. And so that essence, which is in this invisible substance around us, is the energy of God. The spirit of God is all around us all in right the now. air that we Go breathe. Ahead. Go ahead. We can live for... I fasted for 40 days. I didn't get, I didn't die. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I've been without water for a long time. I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. If I went for five minutes without breathing, I would be brain dead, right? Mm -hmm. So breathing is the most important thing you can do. Yeah. It is the essence of how we stay alive. So, um. I think we should get back to that. I yeah. Agree. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I say yoga is not about stretching. We, we may do some movements and postures you know, some different positions because they release tension from the t from the body. They release tension. Who, I mean, who? what religion says, oh, I, I, you should keep tension in your shoulders? <laughs> what religion says you should be stiff and <laughs> locked up? You know? So, so, um, so you do movements, you do postures, you do positions that you combine slow, controlled breathing. You lay down on the floor and you breathe in, you breathe out slowly mm -hmm. and you activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your relaxation response, you know. Now, when you pray, you actually do the same thing. There's a man named Herbert Benson. He wrote a book called The Biology of Belief. And he shows how people who believe, people who have faith, they have better outcomes in terms of health and wellness than people who don't believe in anything, mm -hmm. you know? So I think believing in something, believing in a higher force, believing in a creator and a God has various beneficial, not only spiritual effects, but also biological and, bio, and uh, biochemical effects upon your body and upon the, um, the um, neurotransmitters that you create in your brain. Mm -hmm. so, combining, so combining your faith, prayer, with breathing, meditation, 
I mean, that's the ultimate thing you can do. And then, you know, after church on Sunday, don't eat that fried chicken and them chitlins and stuff. You know, get you some fresh vegetables and some fruit. That's right. Well, you was doing good. You speak your way but you know what? I, I, I agree with you, but I got a song. You know, I feel like a song should Oh, out. you know what? Uh, you know, like, uh, we, we. Um, every breath you take. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, my goodness. You know what? That was deep, Next guys. time. I'm trying to that, tell you. Ne next time. I, you know what? I hope next you got time. that because I'm going to say I, uh, that that what he said need to be shared. And you, definitely. Uh, you, you all. And so people need to come to Soul Yoga yes, Fest. Yes, right we get ready to get into the yes, right now. Yes. Talk, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, yes, sir. Go ahead, talk about it. Soul Yoga Fest. It's a free yoga festival for the people of Chicago. Los, we have one in Los, in Chicago coming up. Mm -hmm. Where did this go? This go this, 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 this all go all around over. the world. Okay, we have Soul Yoga Fest. Go to S O U L Y O G A dot um, F E S T SoulYogaFest dot com. We have these free yoga festivals where you can um take yoga classes for free with masters who come from all over the all country over. Yes. right and um it's free so in chicago it's going to be um J july um july 5th and 6th, 5th and 6th. Mm -hmm. we have an awards dinner on friday the 5th and then we have um um the free yoga festival the master workshops classes. um that on 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 saturday the um six mm -hmm. so this is right after this is that um so-called what's it independence day this is your, this is this <laughs> is your, independence day weekend. this is your real this is your real independence <laughs> yes, really, mm -hmm. yes. you're by free you know so we get ready to wrap up okay um again this weekend i will be in class with the master yes. and it's not a class oh, it's not okay, it so is a, it, it is a, it is a comedic yoga Kemet means ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. It's a Kemetic yoga teacher training course. Mm -hmm. So if you want to become a yoga teacher where you can earn income teaching and also earn income doing something which is positive for people. So mm -hmm. you're not selling drugs, you're not selling crack, you're not selling alcohol, you ain't selling no you're not selling no fried chicken and stuff, you know. Okay. You are you selling some <laughs> some some breathing. Exercising, yeah. We have some water, we have some orange slices just for you. That's okay. This is a this, this, this is this is this okay. is the revolution. Mm -hmm. This is the real revolution, getting your health and your wellness together. Yeah, getting us to live and it ain't nothing about how stiff you are. Or I'm too stiff. I need to be more flexible. Brothers, especially. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care right. how stiff you are. You need to do yoga. How muscular you are. <laughs> how muscle bound you are. It's nothing feminine about yoga. Yoga, or how, maybe, yoga is how a, large you are. You huh? Know? Or how large you are. You no, no. Big and full, but you gotta get the stretches. Yoga is for everybody. For everybody. Yeah, and the movements and postures that we do, they are not like twisting your body up, contorting and stuff. When we do kinetic yoga, we're talking about geometrical alignment of the body, correcting the spine. It's just like if you went to a chiropractor mm -hmm. and he did an adjustment on your body to get everything aligned. That's what that's how kinetic yoga is. All right. Well, we appreciate you. So here's the thing. You know, I will be inviting him back right. over and over every month. He will be up here. Okay. okay. The other thing, we are doing a special raffle because he's going to do the teacher training classes in april as well and um i'm gonna give everybody the opportunity to chime in and try to get their raffle so you can be a part of the teacher training class uh in april it's a the, course course and we have these Talk in chicago okay. new york atlanta las vegas um jamaica egypt gambia west africa and um other places I can't even I can't even think of Brazil is Br Br Brazil is Great coming thing. up. This yes. is we talking about a global thing that we're doing to advance the health, wellness, and well being of people of African descent all over the planet Earth. You know, and this is coming straight out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. and most people in Chicago don't even know nothing about it because um, it's a black thing. It's an African thing. This comes from ancient Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, Kemet. Well. Wow. We're getting ready to have to say uh, 
Until next time, Q4 Radio. Um, I am so glad that you all came and joined me in the last hour of the day. And I know you all found out that we had so much to talk about this Friday. Uh, Laverne, we're going to get back and we're going to talk about your event. Okay. We're going to uh, get it in. And Cortez, I know you're going to come back and we're going to talk about it some more. Oh, but we yes. may not be at the same setting. 